Welcome back to Dude Dad. Today's episode is gonna be a message to all my friends without kids. First off, thank you so much for watching. I know none of my content is relatable to you at all. And if you're not tuning in, that's fine. I get it. You're probably backpacking across Europe. Good for you. Well, I've never actually backpacked across Europe, but I have been to Europe. I did, however, start backpacking a couple of summers ago. Just, you know, some local trips, nothing too crazy. And it's been all right. I think it's made me stronger, so that's a good thing. Welcome to Walk Without Kids, I'm Hannah. This channel is all about building a supportive and non-judgmental community for people who have made the choice to not have any children. I'm here today to apologize. I know we never see each other anymore and I take responsibility because I am the one who started breeding. So I apologize that I don't go out for beers anymore or go golfing or any of the fun stuff that is very difficult to do with children in tow. I don't think any of my friends have ever apologized and said like, I'm really sorry that we don't hang out anymore, but you know, kids. I don't know if that's really a thing. I mean, it's okay. I'm not upset that people have kids. I know that 95% of my friends will have kids. So it's sort of an expectation. So we just hang out. And then once they start the journey of parenthood, we do still hang out, just not as much. And that's totally understandable. The only way you get to hang out with me is if you either hire me so that I'm making money while I'm there, or you just come to my house. Cause we can't go to your house cause my kids will break your stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it, never happened. <clears throat> I have had parents that don't want to bring their kids to my house because they're worried that they're gonna break our stuff. Honestly, I'm not that attached to any of the material goods that I have. I mean, Michael and I break stuff. We went through a phase where we were breaking dishes all the time. And like I've said before, I'm never going to childproof my house because one, I don't have children. And so it just doesn't make any sense to do that. Child-free people don't have kid-proof houses. I didn't even know what kid-proof housing was until, you know, my siblings started having kids. And honestly though, it is just stuff. I feel like everything's sort of replaceable. But I totally get it is easier for child-free people to go to the house of their friends and then their kids have their own bedrooms and their own toys and all that stuff. Because sometimes when kids come here, I feel like there's really nothing for them to do. Like if they're little, little kids, I have one basket with some toys in it that we pull out. It's just stuff that people have donated to us. I don't know how we got some of this stuff. They're only entertained with blocks and Lego for so long. And if the kid is too young, you can't give them the Lego, which we did find out the hard way. Well, actually it was Michael's fault. He gave Lego to like a two year old. And the first thing that baby did was like, put it in its mouth. And the parent was like, oh my goodness. And I was like, I'm so sorry, we don't have kids. Ignorance. We don't know what toys are appropriate for children. I mean, he should have known about the Lego, but I should have thought to tell him, but I didn't. Anyway, everything was fine. The baby didn't swallow Lego, it's all good. Do you guys have any toys for kids in your home? It's not that I don't have time for you. It's that I don't have time at all. The other night I spent 45 minutes trying to convince my son to eat pizza. Not broccoli, pizza. If you don't have kids and you try to tell me how busy you are, all I'm gonna be thinking about is how I sometimes forget to shower. I do think parents are more busy than child-free people. If you're looking after little kids, you're absolutely going to be more busy than I will ever be. But I still feel like I'm busy and I still feel like I'm doing productive things with my time. It's not like I have nothing to do ever. It's just that I'm doing different things with my time. And as someone who doesn't have children, I've also forgotten to shower. You know, sometimes you just have those days, you're just doing stuff and then it's time to go to bed at night and you're like, huh, I smell bad because I didn't shower today. So it's not just a kid thing. I brush someone else's teeth. I also want to apologize that every conversation we have ultimately leads to me talking about my kids. She's, <laughs> she's eating cheese puffs. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. It's true, parents inevitably always talk about their children, but I think that's pretty normal. And honestly, I think it's allowable. I talk about my cats to people or I'll send one of my friends a picture of my cat. Usually when they've sent me a picture of their kid, I'm just like, eh, yeah, send you something back. I don't know if that annoys people. They're part of my life. It is what it is. And I know that you haven't been through this, so I'm just trying to explain to you where I'm at. Here's a metaphor. Imagine you're driving down a highway and on the horizon is all of your hopes and dreams. And you're cruising towards them and your radio's playing, I wanna rock! This kind of makes me want to do a road trip. It's been a while. And you're jamming out and now you're going down a hill and you're picking up speed and your dreams are starting to come into focus. Then your wife gives birth. Ah! And then suddenly your car shifts into reverse, turns around, and now you're going back the other direction. And the hill just keeps going, and the radio doesn't work anymore. There's just static. He's making parenthood sound incredibly appealing. I guess he's really just being a realist of what happens when you become a parent. 
and your gas tank is on E, but for whatever reason, you don't stop. No, you just keep going and going and going. It kind of sounds chaotic and very loud. And then you turn around and you look in the back seat. And there's two car seats. Speaking about car seats, they're actually extremely difficult to put into a car. Have you ever tried to put a car seat into a car? They're confusing to put in. I have nieces and nephews that are still in booster or car seats. And what's really great is as they get older, they like know how to do it. So they just point and they show you even though they're not strong enough to do it. So that's always a plus in case you forget. It took me a while how to figure out the buckles on a car seat because even those can be a little confusing. I mean, to me. And in those two car seats are these two little bodies and these two little faces. And you're eating McDonald's because it's cheap and it's easy. You pull out one fry and you hold it over to your daughter, but she's in a rear-facing car seat, so you can't see her. Yeah, that's confusing to me. I think it's a safety thing, right? When you have to do the rear-facing seat, but then you can't see your kids. I guess that's why they have like the mirrors. I've seen some cars with car seats in them and they have like special mirrors and they're supposed to be able to help you see your kid. So there'd be a mirror here and like a mirror back there. So you can, yeah, I don't know. So you just hold the fry out above her car seat and then you see this little itty bitty hand reach up and just take the fry. I feel like he's having like a super proud daddy moment here, giving his daughter the fry and she reaches out and grabs it. Is he gonna start crying? Cause I feel like he's might be getting a little emotional here. I mean, that's okay. If he's sensitive, that's okay, it's okay. I just feel like this is the part where like the emotional parent thing starts. I'm not gonna cry though. And you have no idea why that moment is significant, but when you look back up through the windshield, you see your dreams again, except now they've changed. They're more in focus and they have more purpose than they ever did before. I think your dreams do change too once you have kids because I think your dreams that you have before kids may not be realistic once you have kids or they may not be realistic in that moment or in that time when your kids are young. That's where I'm at right now. Obviously a little bit difficult for me to relate to where he's coming from because I have no idea. So friends, please keep inviting me to things. I probably still won't be able to come, but you're always welcome to come drink beer in my yard. Just know that you're probably gonna have to help with the kids. It's true. We often do help with children when we go to our friends' place. Whether or not we do it correctly, who knows? We do the best we can. We're child-free. That's our excuse.